It was summer. We were both so nervous. I didn't know what to expect. But I was so captivated by her beautiful long hair, her jiggling legs, and how stoned she was. Oh my god, how good is bread? Like, she was really stoned. Bread is so good, we don't even know. We eat every It was day. beautiful. Mm, are you going to eat yours? I was finally ready for someone new after Stephen. He was different. He wore glasses. He was so fashionable. And that booming voice. You know, like, I reckon if you come to my place, you would see something that would change your opinion on a few things. You know? I said that, but that's my thing. I didn't know what I was feeling. I didn't know what I wanted. I had my expectations. I had my goals. But But one one thing thing I was was certain certain of... I want to have you, baby! Oh, love. How good is love? Your boyfriend keeps getting texts from someone. That's Sandra, presumably. (laughs) Ha! Love. Mum thinks your girlfriend is possessed by the devil and is posting it on her Flat Earthers Facebook group, naturally. Wow, 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 love, isn't it funny? And the in-laws are coming over to wreck that already hot garbage relationship you have by pressuring you to have a kid with your hairy part-time mechanic wife. Love, 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 love. <laughs> yes! Hello! We are a couple of game lords, and today we are drinking. Look, we are drinking a love potion. Dude, and there is ice cream up in this shit. Strawberries. This is redonkulous. You ready? This is perfect. Yeah, I'm mean, ready. If you ever need to get someone in the sack, you want my little, you might want to give them. Aphrodisiac effects and oh, oh, strawberries, am I right? Oh, the love fruit. Big c***s, big f***ing shiny c***s. Like sucking the end of a fat n- <laughs> That's what I assume it tastes like. Let's, let's find out. It's exact. My life is so complete right now. This is redong- it's just- I, I may as well be drinking a milkshake. What is creme de cacao? Is it just a flavor or does it have booze in it? I think it has booze, it's a liqueur, isn't it? It's like blue coracao. 20% alcohol. I hate blue coracao. Yeah, but it's the same company. Vok. I think Vok just do anything they're told, right? <laughs> yeah, they just... What do you need? We'll do it. We'll whack it in one they're... of these. We'll stick a label on it. There you go. Hot tips. Hot shit. I am going to finish this before we even begin. Before, like, oh, what a delight. Me it goes Afternoon down. delight! Pew! That's also a sex thing, isn't it? It is, it's about banging in the evening. Watermelon sugar! Hi! How many songs can we uh, name that are about putting your face in a hole? Face in a hole specifically? I believe or, the lemon song by Led Zeppelin is that squeeze the lemon and let the juice run down my leg. Oh, that just sounds like. <laughs> this is, um, oh, shit, I'm nearly done. You're gonna. Oh my god, <laughs> we haven't even started talking. Okay. Oh, I've got an ice cream headache. Fog of Love is a relationship simulator slash role playing experience for two players. Takes between one and two hours to play. It's very easy to learn thanks to the in game tutorial. This is a really good time. What a, what a treat this is. A little bit of a treat. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Nate, would you recommend this? Well, Maz. I would say, because it's a two-player game, find one other person that can commit to it, split it maybe. Mm. Also be aware, yeah, you have to be into the theme, I would say, because it's kind of a relationship simulator. You do get a good feel. Look at the box and you'll know whether you like it, I reckon. My God. Do you think? The box is beautiful. It's so minimalist. And once you open the box, everything is so bloody tidy. Everything is minimalist. It carries this design theme of just only what is required, very clean. Mm. The quality of components is just ridiculous. Mm. 
You have branded boxes for your tokens, mm -hmm. which are also beautifully crafted. Wooden little tokens for your counters, and then the poker chips. Mm. They're just solid poker chips, and it's wonderful. wonderful. There's a reason that in the instruction manual, there's a <laughs> half page dedicated to the thoughts of the designer. Yeah. Because that's all they know. It's not all they know. They know great game too, because the game's great. Ah. <laughs> I know nothing about the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm already comfortable when I open this game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it looks great. The box is open. I'm not intimidated. I'm ready. Yeah, it's very welcoming. Very yes. much like, you got this. Has a great tutorial. It assumes you've never played board games before, basically. Basically. And ingratiates you, welcomes you in, gets you comfy, and says, let's play a little game. Mm. The game is called Fog of Love. We're going to play it. Right now. In Fog of Love, you and another player will each create characters that will enter into a relationship with one another. Then you'll play out different scenes in which you and your partner's choices will affect your individual stats as well as your overall happiness. This culminates in you hopefully fulfilling your destiny as a couple or breaking up to save yourself defeat. That is the point. Succeed together or alone. The minute you open it, it's just like you're in here. Yeah, get that strawberry out of there. Yeah, put it in my little thing and I'll have a little nibble. Have a little nibble on the straw. <laughs> Everything fits where it should be. On the board, you've got fat decks. The decks are huge. The cards are massive. They do have to have a lot of information on the back. Mm. So I can understand the size of them, but just the fact that they're so big mm. is really satisfying. The insert that comes with the game. They've literally left room for the expansions they know that they're going to release. Oh, and I really enjoy the role-playing aspect of, yeah. of this game. The most enjoyable part is at the beginning, you sort of assign each other traits. <gasps> so you'll be like, I like yeah. the fact that you had jiggling legs. <laughs> <laughs> Which I did like the fact, you know, I like the fact that you're hairy. Yeah. I like your seductive voice and you assign this and then, you know, you can just get into it and be like, okay, yeah. my name is Chad Bigley. And yeah. if you can get into it and you really can because it's all there. It's, it's all just there. presents itself to be like, please get into me. Mm -hmm. I'm here to be gotten into and you will have an absolute blast doing so. You've created your characters and then you're giving a synopsis of the story that you're going to embark on, which which often breaks down into three or four chapters. Mm -hmm. The synopsis card will come out and be like, here we are at the place, doing the thing. <laughs> you have individual goals that you want to fulfill that are a secret to the other person. So much like a real, rela that's what's fascinating, mm. is you end up having conversations that are like a real relationship where you're like, I'm not that assertive. I wouldn't do that. You have to anticipate what I want. Mm -hmm. So you will make decisions based on, okay, I need to fulfill this trait. I'm introverted. I'm selfish. I'm jealous. I'm shy. I have to fulfill these sorts of things. And then gradually your partner will start to pick up and be like, oh, I know that this person is introverted or shy. So I'm going to do this too. And then we meet up and we, we compromise on something and our yeah. happiness goes up. It's way more difficult than it sounds because you're constantly trying to read the motives mm -hmm. of the other player. Uh, it's just like real life, and that's what sucks. At times, painfully relatable. Yeah. You end up laughing about how relatable it actually is. Mm -hmm. You're trying to fulfill your own needs while maintaining this fucking beast that just needs too much to be sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> just an absolute, all-encompassing, engorging monster that feeds off of your happiness. You will be doing it. That's the game. What do we not like? It really is limited in its replayability. <laughs> is, my yeah. is my biggest thing. At a certain point, you're going to have seen all of the cards you could possibly play. You know what, though? Tell me. I feel that is a force negative based on the way they've laid this out. In, in the box, without any expansions, they have four story campaigns. This could be a trouble, monopoly, Cluedo type situation. Want to have a round of Fog of Love? Yeah, but because they've 
made these four distinct chapters that make it seem like you've done it when you've done it. Mm. I feel like that's shooting it in the foot. Whereas if you think of it like those four campaigns introduce you to all of the mechanics as you go along. Because once you get to the end, maybe you throw all them out and you're just playing the decks. I think you can continue to play it if you were like, let's have a quick round of Fog of Love. It's almost in a weird way, not a game. It's like a story machine. Like I've, I've developed the story, we'll play it together. I'll be this person, you're a security guard. Let's see what happens. Yep. But once you've done that, it's not really the sort of thing that you want to whip out again and be like, can I beat you? Can I, or can we do this? No, you, know? you, are, you are right. And like I said, like it could just be a little bland if you're not reading your own charisma and flavor and role playing into all of the cards that you oh. dealt. If you just played the game card for card, it would be f***ing boring. The end game, in my opinion, is anticlimactic. Super anticlimactic. So you have these destiny cards, which you, you're playing from the beginning your own personal destiny. And it's a deck of cards that you slowly whittle and swap out intermittently until you're down to one card that you're like, this is how I win the game card. It could be we've broken up and I hate them and I wish they were dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that never feels like a victory. You just, it just felt like it stopped. So even the victory where I'm like, oh, I break up with you, I win. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's such a hollow victory. I don't give a shit. And I also feel like it's missing that f***ing epilogue too. To mm. be like, did you stay together in this? Did you break oh, up in this? Or did you yeah. whatever? And yes. then here is something for you to read out and be like, this is how we ended the game. It just sort of goes. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Did you win? Did you win? All right, f*** off. Reset the deck and sell it on Facebook, please. <laughs> Which I will be doing. How exactly like real relationships it is, is one of our pros. Mm. But it's also a con for me because it's pretty triggering. Really? This is a game that I play for fun. Why the f*** is it so like real life? Jesus mm. Christ, I need to break up with my partner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Your biology oh. stops your ability to get pregnant. Yeah. Which is strange for them to just... To be so f***ing inclusive with their like everything else. And then there's a card, you're pregnant, except if you've both chosen same sex. Yeah. And I'm like, why, why do that? Yeah. Take that card out or rewrite it. Just take that guys. text like, that out. Make sense. Just make anyone able to be pregnant. Right. Because then what you're basically saying is if you pick the same sex couple, you, you can't do this. Yeah. It's a fucking game. A cheater is automatically assigned the bastard prefix, which is, which I thought was interesting. There was a card that was like, you cheated, blah, 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 blah. And the flavor text was oh, like, yeah. that, fucking ba that, that bastard or whatever it said. Well, I think when we pulled the bastard card too, the card yeah. that says you're a bastard, we were playing a lesbian couple. <laughs> yeah. So it sort of was like, well, that's not really a derogatory term you would use towards a woman anyway. No. And then the implication is, well, it's cheating. Therefore, it must be Cheat. men. You're doing so well to not be so binary. Yeah, and which, in odd places you just trip Which up. is like, it put the handbrake on for me and made me go, hmm. Unfortunately, it, it fucks itself over because it's, it's made all this effort to be like, okay, we have same sex couples, yeah. we have differently abled couples, everything is all over the box. Yeah. But then we've made this like huge oversight every Inside now and then. Yeah. The game is actually, and I noticed this playing it, it's so well designed it opens itself up to nitpicks. Yeah. Cause you're like, I have a spot for this deck. I have a spot for this, I have a spot. Why don't I have a little space for my destiny? Yeah. This is fucking shit. It's but you don't think like, about the fact that like- I this. have to hold these? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? You don't realize how spoiled you are because if it were yeah. any other game, it's so well designed that the smallest oversight becomes fucking glaring. Yeah. To wrap it all up. Yes. This game is especially fun. If you employ some light role playing into it, we had a really good time playing a variety of different characters and, and couples. What's in the box, you could sit down and smash out in an evening if you really wanted to. Uh, and then if you felt so inclined, you'd be like, that was really fun, let's get some expansions. Yes. Jacob Yaskov. Jakob Yaskov. Nice. Oh. oh. Bloody great job. Really enjoyed it. Can't wait to play some of the expansions personally. Yes. And would we give it a hot stamp? I think I would actually. I'm gonna stamp it. I'm gonna stamp it. It's really unique, really special. Mm. I would say this 
Find someone you want to play it with. Just get, and commit to playing through it. If you really enjoy it, get the expansions. And you know what? Reset the tutorial, don't be a and pass it on. That's right. And Jakob Yaskov, I got my eyeball on you, mate. This design is sick. I can't wait to see what you do next. And before the two of you commit to holy matrimony, do either of you have any secrets you'd like to confess to one another right now in front of your friends and family? Yes, I've been having sex with his best friend and my lab assistant, and it's been quite good. And you, me lad? I have a secret. Go on, unburden yourself. I've been planning a surprise party for her. And, and you still f you still want to do the wedding? We, we do. do. Okay, well go on then.